Hello everyone and a very very warm welcome to Economics Media. So today in this session we are going to cover a very important topic and this topic is mainly from the advanced microeconomics portion of economics. Okay now why I said advanced microeconomics now once you heard this term like advanced microeconomics there is a tendency where you will try to skip this video or you will try to skip this session. Well, don't do it. If you are preparing for your competitive exams or for your further studies like uh, masters or uh, PhD, then this video is going to help you in your preparation and also in your understanding of economics. So today in this session, I'm just going to give you a brief about the topic. Okay, and if any one of you is interested to know in details about the advanced microeconomic topic that we are going to discuss in this session, please feel free to contact us. And the contact details is appearing on your screen. That is the WhatsApp number and also the official mail ID. You can also find the official mail ID and the WhatsApp number below in the description box as well. So for any confusion or any query, feel free to contact us at any time. Okay, so what is the topic that we are going to cover is bandwagon and the snob effect. Now this bandwagon and the snob effect is very important. If you are preparing for UPSC uh, Indian Economic Services or for UPSC uh, where you are thinking or uh, you are going to take up your optional paper on economics, then this topic is very, very important. To give you a uh, glance of how this important the topic is, you will find the question on Bangman effect and the snob effect on the Indian Economic Service paper of 2020. That's right, the past year. In the last year only, this question appeared in the Indian Economic Services. So I hope you are understanding the depth of this topic and the depth of today's session. So, without any further ado, let me just begin with the session and give you an overview of how the bang bang effect and the snob effect are related to microeconomics and also I'll be discussing it in a very layman's language so that every one of you can understand. And for any further uh, assistance, feel free to contact right. us. So, whenever we talk about this uh, type of, these two type of effects, bang bang effect and the snob effect, the one thing that you need to remember is this network externality. This term is very important whenever we talk about this bang bang effect and this snob effect. Why? So most of us have learned about this externality, right? What is this externality? Positive externality, negative externality. So what is network externality? Now the term is quite self-explanatory network externality what does network mean since i have already mentioned that i am going to discuss this session in a very layman's language so i am going to discuss it like that network it means what connectivity right so this network you got to understand the term network externality from this word network so whenever there is some demand for a good but that demand for a good by that particular uh, consumer is depending on the demand by other individuals as well. For example, I'm going to take up an example to make you understand in a much better way. So I'm taking the example, let's say telephone or mobile phone. Okay. Suppose you want to own a mobile phone, let's say nowadays people don't generally buy this telephone. So I'm going to take the example of mobile phone. Suppose uh, Mr. X is thinking of buying a mobile phone. But the demand by Mr. X of mobile phone depends whether Mr. A is having mobile phone or not. Because Mr. X and Mr. A are going to communicate via this mobile phone. Right? So this is how the demand for mobile by Mr. X is dependent on the demand uh, by Mr. A. Let's take another example. 
फैक्स मशीन सो फैक्स मशीन ओनिंग बाय एनी पर्टिकुलर कंपनी डिपेंड्स ऑन द डिमांड फॉर फैक्स मशीन ऑन दी बाय द अदर कंपनीज all right so that is how the demand for fax machine by a respective company is again dependent on the demand by other companies of this fax machine so whenever we talk about these type of goods where the demand by uh, one individual or one uh, you know company or one institution depends on the other persons or other institutions demand for that particular good then we are facing what the network externality all right now just like externality there is positive externality as well as the negative externality so here the network externality can be either of the two that is there is positive network externality and also there is negative network externality and with this positive network externality and negative network externality we have the two effects arising that is the bang bang effect and the snob effect all right so this is the basic introduction now i'm going to come and discuss the bang bang effect first and then i'll be moving towards the snob effect all right so coming to discuss the bang bang effect now first of all the bang bang effect you have to remember that it arises from the positive network externality that we have just discussed all right so uh bang bang effect the cause of bang bang effect is arising due to this positive network externality now what is this bang bang effect so we need to understand that bang bang effect i'm i'm explaining it with the help of example okay so that you can really connect and really understand so bang bang effect that is suppose a person want to be in fashion like whatever the trend is going on right right now that particular individual is want uh, that particular individual want to be uh, in the fashion like he will be he or she will be buying the particular clothes or the bags maybe or this uh, sandals or shoes that are in the fashion so whenever an individual have the desire to be in style that particular individual will be buying the goods or the products that are belonging to the fashion okay so if um for better explanation let's take up an example let's say i'm going to talk about delhi it's a city now uh let's suppose let's assume one thing that most of the uh, people living in delhi want to be in fashion okay like want to be in fashion like they want to buy the products or buy the clothes or uh, any other commodities that relate to the fashion current trend all right uh <clears throat> okay so let us say that this is our uh, axis and here we are measuring the quantity and here i am measuring the price of what clothes and clothes okay so starting with let us say that my let's say this is all right so let's consider the demand curve for a particular good is um, d1 for the city let's say delhi and now let's say this demand curve d1 is for 10000 individuals okay now this 10000 individual it is very less as compared to the total population of delhi isn't it so and let's say this d1 uh, is basically the demand for jeans the trending jeans that is existing right now all right or um, okay so now let's say if it is assumed that the individual who want to be in fashion or who want uh, who, who are interested in buying this new uh, trending jeans has increased from 10000 to 20000 okay let's say the demand increased 
so what happens that more people want to be in fashion like they are saying okay so if they are buying then why can't we buy it all right so if that happens then what will happen let's say the demand curve is represented by d2 and therefore since this many individuals were previously in fashion now these many individuals wants to be in fashion therefore the demand for jeans what happens it increases so simply the demand curve d2 will shift rightward that is uh, on the right side of d1 similarly if again it assume that okay so if, since 20000 people are buying this then we can buy it too and let's be in the trend so let's say 30000 people wants to buy it now therefore the demand curve that is d3 that will be shifting to the right again so my d3 is representing the 30000 next individuals so therefore the d3 curve is right here all right so now look due to this bang bang effect what it is happening that since a certain amount of individual has already purchased that particular commodity by seeing that more people wants to buy that okay therefore that d1 shifted to d2 then shifted to d3 and going on so how this bang bang effect demand curve will look like it would look like this i'm representing by dm okay so this flatter or relatively elastic demand curve is representing the bang bang effect of the uh, <clears throat> bang bang effect of the demand for jeans so what it is that we have noticed bang bang effect first of all it is arising uh, from the positive network externality all right and one more thing that you need to understand and remember that the demand for bang bang uh, the demand uh, for a particular commodity increases as many of the individuals as more of the individual are tending to buy that commodity okay so uh, suppose if uh, just like this 10000 people have already bought it by looking at them 20000 more are buying it then 30000 and going on okay so this is a very important thing uh, in bang bang effect and one more thing that you need to remember is that bang bang effect the demand curve for bang bang effect is relatively elastic all right so that is it about the bang bang effect in a very short format and in a very compact way so now let's move forward with the snob effect all right the snob effect since bang bang effect arises from the positive network externality therefore this snob effect will be arising from the negative network externality okay all right so let's understand what snob effect is bang bang effect i'm going to relevant i'm going to uh, discuss it in a way so that you can really understand the difference between the bang bang and the snob effect okay so what was bang bang effect it was like the demand for that particular good will increase as more of the individuals will be uh, tending to buy it but snob effect is relatively different snob effect uh, again i'm going to take an example let's say the example of um, customized car customized luxury car okay example that i'm taking customized very luxury cars if this is our example so this very luxury car which are generally customized for this one individual so what does this individual's uh, you know perception imply that particular individual want to possess something that is having a unique value attached to it isn't it not that everyone can afford this customized very luxury cars but if someone is holding or if someone is having a demand for this thing then that particular individual is showing the interest in having this um, very luxury car which is only being customized for him or her 
all right so that is what that is uniqueness of a particular commodity is being captured up all right so once that happens then we have a snob effect another example you can take this um, you know artwork very rare artwork so those things exist uh, due to this again unique value attached to it and no one really wants to share it now just with the demand curve, I have explained the bang bang effect. Now with the same thing, I am going to explain the snob effect as well. Alright, so for this snob effect, the snob effect, to understand that, let's take that this D1 is the demand for a very rare thing, let's say unique artworks. Okay, if this is the thing. And now let's say this uh, D1 is very less, okay? The number of people holding on to this D1 is relatively less. Now suppose a few more individuals want to get hold of this artwork, okay? So what will happen is that the demand curve of the, you know, artwork will, in which direction it will move? Can you, can you guess? Yes it will move downward or leftward you can say. So if the demand for this uh, artwork increases, then the market demand curve of the artwork will reduce or you can say it has moved to the left direction. Similarly, if more demand for this artwork goes up, then the demand will reduce further. Okay, this is what happens in snob effect. Since the demand is to get hold or attain something that is very much unique in nature. If the demand uh, of that unique good increases, then obviously the market demand for that particular thing will fall down. Therefore, if uh, you want to get hold of this snob effect demand curve, it will relatively look somewhat like this i'm again representing here by dm and this is dm again so you can see that this demand curve dm is relatively inelastic the demand curve under bang bang effect it was very much elastic in nature but under this knob effect it is relatively inelastic right so this is how the you need to explain the bang bang effect as well as this knob effect with the help of demand curve now I hope this session is a bit helpful and it has cleared, you know, a bit of doubt regarding this bang bang effect or this snob effect, which is a very important part from the advanced microeconomics theory, as I've already mentioned. So for any further guidance, and if any one of you want to get hold of this, you know, study material on this topic, feel free again to contact us via WhatsApp as well as the official mail ID and the details are appearing on your screen, get hold of it and contact us for any further query until then have a great day keep your preparations on and if you like this session you know what to do hit the like button and if you are new to our channel do subscribe and press the press the bell icon to never miss any update from our channel thank you very much see you in next video thank you